It's like a Bible personality quiz. What is <coughs> and I? And it's true that there is stuff about the soil in this community today and how the seed fair and different kinds of soil. But Jesus said, and this could be a clue, that this is the parable of the sower. Well, let's look at that for a minute and see what we can see. You probably know that parables are not stories with morals, but stories that are puzzles with a twist, sometimes an absurdity, as an important feature. Jesus' parables often use examples um, from housekeeping or farming, because these are people, these are things that people do. And the people who were hearing Jesus speak knew about it. But then Jesus would turn things upside down, and the people would get that it was upside down. So when he asks, who wouldn't leave the 99 obedient good sheep and go after that dumb old sheep that got lost? <coughs> Normal shepherding standard would suggest that the answer is no, actually, no one would do that. No one would leave 99 for the one. That's absurd. Or in another story, no one would be so excited about a lost quarter that they would throw a party that costs $100 to celebrate. No, Jesus, that's absurd. And so, so, he turns out to be pretty absurd, too. Because if you're a farmer, your seeds are precious. Your future depends on their yield. You don't want them wasted, eaten, washed away, lost. But this sower blinked out the seeds everywhere. There is no pre-flinging soil analysis <laughs> as part of this sower. The sower doesn't sit down and figure out where is the best place to put the seed. Doesn't try to avoid the rocky places or the path or the thorns. Doesn't even especially aim. <coughs> doesn't bend down happy, precious seed into its field with its rose. This sower flings with abandon. Because this particular sower knows that there is more than enough seed to sow in every nook and cranny, And even more than enough to waste. And who can say how much is wasted in it? If he dispersed it goes back to the earth. It nourishes, even if it doesn't immediately look productive. It may come up later. It may grow a fern through the cracks in the patio in that one shady spot to the delight of a curious little rat. So this sower is unbelievable, extravagant, exuberant, profligate, which is sometimes a negative word, profligate, right? Because it makes us think of wasteful. But who is to say 
what is wasted. And who cares if the sower flings the seed everywhere? It's the sower's seed, not ours. There is no condemnation of this profligate sower. Jesus obviously approves. Maybe that's another one. So yeah, there's the soil. But do you see how easy it is to just skip right to that part and focus on ourselves and begin to justify ourselves and make it about us? Of course we want to be fertile soil. Of course we want to bear good fruit. And we congratulate ourselves for working hard to make ourselves into fertile soil. And maybe we might be tempted to look around at other people and size them up. What kind of soil are they? What kind of fruit are they doing? And then maybe we're tempted to compare ourselves to others. Or even to judge others. To focus on how good we are in comparison to how bad they are. And then we have made it all about us. And we forget all about Jesus' favorite soul. The one who flings out that grace wherever it might land. No pre nor analysis required. And we forget that it is God who saves. Because actually we cannot. And you see where we can end up. I think this is why Jesus specifically says that this is the parable of the sower, the wild flinger, the one who knows that God is in charge of the harvest, and to help us see the focus where the focus on me. The prophet Isaiah says in another reading, that instead of the thorn to come up with vipers, and instead of the briar to come up with murders, because it is God who gives the seed to the sower. It is God who makes light rise from the cracks in the sidewalk and brings light to the bones of the valley and throws out grace everywhere. Because with God, there is always enough, and more than enough. Grace is not a pie that only has a piece. We don't always know what God has in store, either for us here at Christian Nation or for the world, which can feel scary. But we don't need to be afraid. These days, our world in here, the world out there may feel strange, confusing, and presents us with puzzles to ponder, and maybe some observers <coughs> pull us up forward. We wonder what it all means, and how we are to live in hard, sad, or difficult, and <coughs> times. But maybe this is a good time to remember with gratitude this sower leaning out the seed and leave off the judgment and the self justification and just marvel. Marvel that God's work is to bring new life out of change and turmoil. God's work is to bring new life out of change and turmoil. That's what God always does. The seeds of new life bring new life. Crazy, but it just might work. New life are flying everywhere around here now. Flying all over the place. So let us wonder, simply wonder, 
without judgment, without fear, just what and where this stone of seed will grow here and now.